Hello students I am Dr Shilpa Shri and welcome to my channel Study Management in this video we will be studying about scientific management theory given by F W Taylor Frederick Winslow Taylor is regarded as the father of scientific management he was an american mechanical engineer who sought to improve industrial efficiency he is one of the great contributors of the classical theory of management he was the first person who insisted on the introduction of scientific methods in management he focused on the improvement of productivity at the shop level or the factory level now let us understand the various factors that led to the evolution of scientific management theory while taylor worked in midvale steel company he observed the following aspects he noticed that the workers were inefficient they worked at a very slow pace employees used different techniques to do a same job there were no effective standards workers had no incentive to produce more because they were paid on hourly basis as a result the, the output was restricted workers were asked to do jobs which were unrelated to their abilities and skills management depended on intuition and trial and error basis this affected the output and thereby increased the cost and waste stages taylor thought that by scientifically analyzing the work it would be possible to find one best way to do it thus he came up with his most famous work on scientific management wherein he saw productivity as the answer to both higher wages and higher profits and he believed that the application of scientific methods could yield more productivity His famous work entitled The Principles of Scientific Management was published in the year 1911. Now let us understand the meaning of scientific management. In the words of Taylor, scientific management means knowing exactly what you want men to do and seeing that they do it in the best and the cheapest way. Scientific management can also be understood as the use of scientific method to define one best way for a job to be done. In other words, scientific management is a result of applying scientific knowledge and scientific methods to the various aspects of management and the problems that arise from them. Now let us go through the different principles of scientific management given by f w taylor replacing the rule of thumb by scientific methods cooperation between management and workers maximum output scientific selection placement and training of the workers equal division of work and responsibility The first important principle of scientific management is replacing rule of thumb by scientific methods. This principle suggests that work assigned to any employee should be first observed, analyzed with respect to each and every element, part and time involved in it. It means analyze the work scientifically rather than using the old thumb rule method. identify what is to be done by a particular worker how he has to do it what equipment will be necessary to do it this is very important so that the worker does not waste any resources time and also the cost that is involved in executing the work decision should be based on facts and not on intuition or judgment The second important principle is cooperation between management and workers. Taylor believed in cooperation and not individualism. For achieving the objectives of organization, there should be cooperation between the management and the workers. There should be no conflict or misunderstandings between the managers and the workers. Importance should be given to cooperative efforts and not individual effort. The third important principle is maximum output. The aim of scientific management is to see maximum prosperity for employer and employees. 
instead of giving restricted output worker should be asked to give maximum output as output increases the cost per unit will decrease and thereby the productivity will improve maximum output and optimum utilization of resources will bring higher profits for the employer and better wages for the workers the next important principle is scientific selection placement and training of workers first select the workers best suited to perform the specific task and then train them within the industry in order to attain the objectives of the enterprise scientific selection means selecting the workers based on factors such as education work experience physical strength and the skill that is required to execute the work worker should also be trained from time to time to keep them informed of the latest development in the techniques of production the next important principle is equal division of work and responsibility taylor emphasized on equal responsibility between the worker and the management the management should assume the responsibility of planning the work whereas a worker should be concerned with execution of the task that is assigned to them this results in elimination of conflict and mistrust between the worker and the management now let us understand the different techniques of scientific management these techniques are also sometimes known as tools or elements of scientific management the first one is separation of planning from doing second differential piece wage plan third work study fourth scientific selection and training of workers fifth functional foremanship sixth standardization and the last one is mental revolution the first important technique is separation of planning from doing taylor suggests that the planning function should be separated from doing function to secure the benefits of division of work and specialization the work of planning should be the responsibility of management and the management should plan organize and direct the work whereas the worker should implement the plans here in the first picture as you can see the management that is the members of the topmost level are engaged in planning the duties that are required to be assigned to the lower level managers and in the second picture it gives you an overview of how the workers are assigned different tasks and they are executing the tasks given to them within the specified time period The second important scientific management technique given by Taylor is differential piece wage plan it is also known as financial incentive Taylor suggested that the worker should be paid according to their efficiency he suggested that the pay should be linked to the piece of work done by the worker for example two workers in a factory are assigned the task of producing certain number of units within a specified period of time one worker produces 50 units of output and the other worker produces 80 units of output within the assigned time frame and under same working condition here the worker who has produced 80 units of output should be paid more wages than the worker who has produced 50 units of output differential piece rate plan implies different rates of wages for different levels of efficiency of work. workers in the event of achieving a greater output then a bonus payment should be made to the worker the next important technique is work study the management should study each and every element of the work scientifically and decide the daily standard output for each work work study is of four types method study time study motion study and fatigue study method study helps to identify the best way to do a particular job time study enables to determine the standard time that is required to complete a particular job 
Motion study refers to the study of movements like lifting, putting objects, sitting and changing positions which are undertaken while doing a typical job. The motion study will help to remove the unnecessary movements of the workers while completing the job and also helps to save the time and energy. Fatigue study, it seeks to determine the frequency of rest intervals in completing a task because an individual worker requires certain period of rest while performing a particular task. Fatigue study will therefore help to determine the amount and frequency of the rest that is required while completing a particular task. With the help of this technique, the management can give precise idea to the workers on what is to be done and how it can be done efficiently. The next important scientific management technique is scientific selection and training. This point has also been highlighted in the principles of scientific management given by F. W. Taylor. As mentioned earlier, there should be scientifically designed procedure for the selection of workers. Scientific selection means to choose the best employee according to the need. Their skill and experience must match the requirement of the job. Further, they should be trained on a regular basis to do the task in the best manner and give maximum output at minimum cost. The fifth important scientific management technique is functional foremanship. Taylor criticized the system of one worker reporting to one boss only and hence he introduced functional foremanship to bring about specialization in the functions. In the functional foremanship, the worker receives orders from eight different specialized supervisors. In this picture, under the factory manager, there are two different categories that is planning in charge and production in charge. Under planning in charge, there are four different supervisors. Instruction card clerk is concerned with drafting the instructions for the workers regarding the different aspects of work. Route clerk specifies the route or the flow of of production activity. Time and cost clerk prepares the time and cost sheet and disciplinarian he ensures discipline in the work environment. The second category that is the production in charge has four different supervisors. Speed boss is responsible for timely and accurate completion of the job. Gang boss is responsible for keeping the machines and tools ready for production. Repair boss ensures proper working condition of machines and tools and the inspector checks the quality of the work. Each worker has to take orders from these eight foremen in the related process or function. Through this functional foreman system, Taylor wanted to create the narrowly specialized supervisor for each type of skilled work. The next important scientific management technique is standardization. Taylor advocated the importance of standardization. Standardization means the process of bringing uniformity. In other words, it means setting standards or benchmarks. Standardization helps in reducing time, labor and cost of production. Taylor suggested standardization for the following elements, tools, equipments, raw materials, quality of work, physical working conditions, techniques of production. The last important scientific management technique is mental revolution. Mental revolution involves a change in the attitude of workers and management towards each other. While management has the obligation of creating a suitable working condition and solving all the problems of the workers scientifically, the workers have the responsibility of attending to their jobs with utmost attention, devotion and carefulness. They should not waste the resources of the enterprise. Management should give fair remuneration to the workers to boost up their morale. This will create a sense of belongingness among the workers and they will be more sincere in fulfilling the tasks assigned to them. As a result, there will be more production and will ensure maximum prosperity for both the employer as well as the employee. 
The scientific management theory of Taylor was criticized by many managers, workers and also psychologists for the following reasons. Taylor treated workers just as a factor of production. He neglected the social and psychological needs of workers. Thus, he ignored the human element. Taylor concentrated on improving productivity at the shop floor and his philosophy is confined only to the workers at the shop level. He ignores the efficiency of the overall organization. Functional foremanship that Taylor suggested resulted into over specialization and it created confusion in the minds of the workers. Scientific management is anti-democratic. In other words, it is authoritarian in its approach. It does not seek participation of workers in decision making. Few of the criticisms that were highlighted in the scientific management theory given by F. W. Taylor were later remedied by other contributors to scientific management. Henry L. Gant, he is popularly known for his work on task and bonus system and the famous Gant chart. Frank Gilbreth and Lillian Gilbreth, a team of husband and wife, worked on motion study and the psychological factors affecting workers' productivity. Here, I have listed few of the books on management written by different authors for your further reading and understanding. I hope you have enjoyed watching my video. Thanks for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel.